Okay, Job chapter 19. Then Job answered, Job's turn, and said, How long will you vex my soul? He's not a happy camper. And break me in pieces with words. It's almost like these words are more harsh than his punishment of the devil. They say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Don't teach that to Job. Now I've said oftentimes, you get a, a woman doesn't have to be battered by fists. She can be battered by words. Words can destroy somebody. You realize Adolf Hitler never touched a Jewish body, but his mouth killed many Jewish people? These ten times have you reproached me. Chapter 4, verse 5 and 8. Chapter 5, verse 4. Chapter 8, verse 2 and 6. Chapter 11, verse 13. Chapter 15, verse 2. Chapter 15, verse 5 and 18, 2 and 4. Joe's been counting. Every time they speak, he maybe puts a finger up and puts a mark in the ground. He knows how many times they've spoken. And it says, Ye are not ashamed that you make yourselves strange to me. You're running off your mouth. It ain't helping. You're physicians of no value. You have no wisdom. You are vexing me. And you don't even blush. And be it indeed. That I have erred. I have erred. I have sinned. My error remained is with me. Now they've been throwing Job at you're the wicked one. You're going to hell. All this is because you have violated God. You have done God injustice. And God is giving you the right act. And then sometimes they say you're going to hell. Job has responded. Yeah I've erred. If indeed... Ye will magnify yourselves against me, which they've been doing, and plead against me my reproach. You know, you're higher than me. You think you're better than me. You think because you're not here in the position I have, you haven't lost everything. Your family has not died. Your wife has not left you. Uh, you know, you're much better than I am. You're holier than thou. That's what he's saying. Know now that God has overthrown me. He's going back to blaming God. God has overthrown me and hath compassed me with his net. Remember, Bill, that 18 kept saying snares, nets, and gins. Job is responding. Job is saying, okay, yeah, God has put me in a net. Yeah, okay, what, Bill, Dad? Now what? If God has put me in a snare, God has caught me by my foot, I am in a net, I have been caught, I, I, I am entangled. Yeah. What? What? God has overthrown me, Bill, Dad. What? What's the answer? Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. He's telling them, you know, I am confessing what I've done wrong. I am telling you what my problems are. I am telling you how I feel. I am getting it off my chest. You're not listening to me. And they're not. Because Job is not going to hell. Job is not that mighty, wicked man. You know, people can talk and not listen to you. People can hear and not listen. Jesus said all the time, they have ears, but they hear not. That's these three men. I cry aloud. He's, he's outspoken, loud. But there is no judgment. Oh, there's judgment. You're going to hell, Job. Everything is because of your fault. But that's not the judgment. The judgment Job's looking at, okay, show me my sin. Show me where I am wrong with God. I can judge myself, Paul says, the Christians. And I can get it right with God. Don't tell me I'm going to hell. You know, 
you can't and there's there's street preachers out there hell 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 and, and you know the wrong sin that, that dress is too long and you know having that can of beer in your hand you're going to hell that's not the truth that's not the sin that will damn you in hell that's a sin that you're doing but the the sin that will damn you to hell is is not believing in the lord jesus christ now we know by chapter 1 and 2, Job is not going, he is right with God. He, God, has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. And the devil told God, well, you put a hedge about him. Chapter 1. Let me cut down that hedge and get him. God has protected Job, but Job doesn't realize that that hedge has been a protection. And that God has removed that hedge and allowed Satan to come into his being. We know that because we read chapter 1 and chapter 2. Job has not read 1 and 2. And we don't even know if he's read his book. This book could have been written after he died. You don't know. I don't know. Because, uh, I'm just saying. He has set darkness in my path. Well, God is light. Who's the only being that would, would put darkness would be the devil. So he's falsely accusing God. And we do that too. When we, whatever our troubles are, that God, why are you doing this to me? We don't know he's doing it. I, I, hopefully tomorrow, Lord willing, I, I'm doing another segment where David was ordered by God to number Israel and then Satan was ordered. David to number Israel, and then Job 1 and 2, and they realize we just don't know. The devil to destroy us, I can say that. God to help us, I can say that. And man destroys himself by not paying attention to what God has told him to do. I can say that. He, God, has stripped me of my glory. Well, what would that be? His children and his possessions? Is that really glory? Did not Jesus say about the man that had all the fruits and all the barns? He said, so, I'm going to say to myself, so, I'm going to tear everything down, and I'm going to build bigger, and I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. And God says, thou fool. So Job is now related to us by listening to him. There's another sin in Job's life. There are material things, and there are family that he's put ahead of God. Now, there's no Ten Commandments yet, Exodus 21, but he has put things before God. His family and his possessions, either or or both, has been, look how well I am. Maybe his health, too. And taking the crown from my head. Authority. Rulership. Now, I don't know if he wore a crown as a judge. He has destroyed me on every side. Remember those guys? The first guy showed Job, this, this has been destroyed and conquered. Oh, now here comes another message. Lord, this fire came down from heaven. All these things are burnt up. Oh, and then, hey, Lord, the, the army came along, took everything. Oh, and your family was inside the house and this whirlwind came. Oh. Remember chapter 1, it just would not stop. But he didn't sin. And then chapter 2, boom, he gets hit with the, with the medical issues. I am gone. Uh, you're there. And my hope has removed like a tree. There's that tree again. Five times you see trees representing Job. Everything's gone. That's my life. Don't let that be your life. If the Lord would take all your material things away, oh, my life. Don't let it be your religion like the, like the guy in, ju in Judges. You stole my God, so I have no more religion. And uh, Rachel's father there, Laban, you stole my God, so I have, no, I have no religion. Don't let it ever be like that. Let your treasures be in heaven, in glory, where Jesus says no thief or robber can get it. Now, you can ruin your own rewards, but no one else can. He, God, has also kindled his wrath against me. No, the devil's wrath. And he 
counteth, that's the first time that word shows up, me unto him as one of his enemies. No, actually completely wrong. Satan comes up to God, as thou considered my servant Job. Oh yeah? Well, guess who the enemy is? The devil, not God. And God allowing the devil to do what he's doing to Job as chastisement is that God loves Job. Uh, Hebrews 12 or 13, as a father to correct his child. And actually what God is doing for Job, the correction and the chastisement, because Job, I love you and I want you to do right. And I was seen to the purpose, again, I'm going to speak in my own words, and you don't have to take them. I don't think the devil knows what he's doing. If the devil had an idea, think about this with, with Job. Oh yeah, you want me to go after him and, and, and get him and attack him and, so you can help him? You think the devil would say, okay, I'll sign up for that. So evidently, the devil does not have the knowledge of the good of God. I'll just go get him. I'll go get him. I'll kill him. I'm going to destroy him. God's like, go do it. And God already knows the end from the beginning. He knows Job's going to get right. The devil doesn't. At this point, the devil's there in the background thinking, all right, I'm getting, I got Job. Man, he is blaming God, his friends. Oh, I'm glad I brought those friends. I got the victory. Chapter 42 devil loses. So I don't think the devil knows that God's chastising us to our glory using the devil, and it's called the battle axe. I forget, in Ezekiel Jeremiah. And when I grew up in New London as a little boy, I would hear husbands talk about their wives as the battle axe. I don't know if you heard that, but I used to hear that all the time. Oh, my wife, the battle axe. You better be careful, because that's the devil. I haven't heard it recently, but God will use the devil to correct us. His troops, army, come together and raise up their way against me. Now, remember all the people that came and took and, and raided Job? He thinks God sent all those armies. He thinks that fire from heaven was from God. I don't know if we looked at in Revelation in... Uh, Thessalonians, but the Antichrist is able to call fire down. I think we looked at that. You got to realize, almost, you know what the Antichrist means? He's almost like Christ, but guess what? He's not. He comes in on the white horse that so many, so many men in the pulpit and teachers in churches think that that first white horse with one crown is Jesus Christ. It's not. He's got people so fooled that think doctrine of Matthew is church age. It's not. But remember, Job has not read 1 and 2. We have. We have a more special revelation that Job doesn't have. And you know what? In our trials and mysteries and, and troubles that we have, we may not understand what is going on in life, and it may be after we're dead that we, oh, I see why they suffer. Maybe an autopsy of our body will say, oh, that's why you had what you had. Or maybe we will die and someone will say, you know what? That person was so faithful. That person is all the way to the end, to death. I'm going to trust in Jesus now. You know, a lot of people in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, when they died for the word of God, people got saved. When they saw the ambition that that person went to the faggots, because of the word, it must be something that I don't have. There's one of the men spoke about the Fox's Book of Mark. He went up, it was the guillotine or something, and he told the execution, you put your hand on my heart. And if my heart does not have a rapid heartbeat as your heart right now, you don't need to believe on my Jesus. And you know what? That does something to people. That said, hey, it's real. Against me and encamp round about my tabernacle. There's an army. And they're all around me. 13, we're going to get a little more familiar with Job. He, God, has put my brethren far from me. My family are gone. Great family. Don't always rely on your family. It's going to be there for you. They didn't pick you. You were born into them. 
that's a Bible doctrine, and if people don't like it. That's hey, I serve the Lord, and I see my family going, and my acquaintances, my friends, are very estranged. That's the first time that word shows up from me. Job's all alone right now with these three friends, maybe four. I don't know when the light who shows up. And these guys ain't doing a very good job, are they? My kinsfolk, aunts, uncles, whoever, cousins, have failed. Kinsfolk's the first time kinsfolk shows up in the Bible. Their family and my familiar friends have forgotten me. Don't trust your friends. Again, look at the life of Jesus. How many people throughout the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry were there with him at the cross? How many people visit John on the island of Patmos? When he put the boiling oil. Paul writes his final letter to Timothy. All these people have forsaken me. I sent this man off to, the, uh, to this city. I sent this man off to this church. I sent him in. I'm alone. They that dwell in my house, maids, servants, guests, and my maids, count me for a stranger. I am an alien in this. Great friends, great, great buddies Job has right now. They're all gone in this trial of misery. You know all the people that Jesus helped? Where were they? Where were they? Job shows us a picture of Jesus. Where were they? Remember Job's the one to say, God, you have eyes like me? No. Nope. Do you have the do you have the feelings that I have? No. Nope. And then when Jesus is born and he, he he becomes the human and he is God and he is human and he suffers. Okay, Job, I can say yes now. Don't you think don't ever think that Jesus cannot match what problems and troubles you have in your life? Some people say, well, Jesus wasn't married. He had 12 men. Four of them were fishermen. They were bad enough. One was a tax collector. He was hated. And the disciples had a great attitude. Well, we got the multitude here. They're hungry. Let's feed them. Oh, Lord, get them out of here, will you? <laughs> Isn't that a great attitude with the disciples? We don't want them here. Well, what do you got that we give them? We got seven fish and two little fish. Like, that's going to do a lot of good. That's the attitude that Jesus had around him. And then when the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes around him, let's see if we can catch them so we can get them, turn them over to the government. That's the kind of people had around Jesus. Job's got the same one. Let's get Job. Let's entwist him. Let's entangle him. No one's out for the welfare of Job. No one was out for the welfare of Jesus. When Jesus asked for water, they never gave it to him. They were more desirous of the dead body of Jesus than the live body of Jesus. The women spent the Sabbath getting all the spices for the dead body. And he would say to somebody, I don't have a place to lay my head. All right, my breath is strange to my wife. Oh, here comes Job's wife. Now, we've already sir, saw the word is, is, yeah, is strange, verse 13. I'm going to take it on the line, and you can throw this in the garbage can. But there's a term in, in law called is strange that we already looked at. And there's a possibility that Job's wife wanted to leave him. Throw that out there. I can't be wrong. And if I am, I'll plead the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the only time she's mentioned since chapter 2. My wife doesn't even know who I am. She doesn't even recognize my breath. What, what would a husband and wife get with the breath? Going to kiss? Intimacy? And she doesn't even know what my breath. Though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. Job chapter 1 we read. He would offer offerings unto God in case my children have blasphemed the name of God. 
I did the priestly work of my family, and my wife doesn't even know who I are. And I'm going to say that verse 17, mentioning the children with the wife, she is angry and blaming Job, and I could be wrong, for the death of her children. He's got no friends, he's got no family, he's got any of the people in his own household, except for these three guys. Yea, young children despise me. The children are not Job's family. The children that know, because Job sat in the gate. He would see children. He would see people, men and women, going through the gate. And now the children, <laughs> run from him. He's got disease. He's got cooties. Get away from him. Mama said, don't go near that guy right now. But he's our, no, he's not our friend. Get away from him. I arose, and they spank against me. Job would get up, and they, and they would they would criticize Job. So he's not only getting it from his three friends, he's not getting nothing from his family, he's not getting anything from his friends, he's not getting anything from his higher help, and anybody that does see them, they're ranking on him as they go by him. And it looks like he gets up to greet the children and they run away, teasing them. They, they didn't do that? What did they do with Elijah? Thou bow head, thou bow head. Scripture is scripture. All my inward friends, that inward family of friends, abhor me. They hate me. Then they're not friends. And they whom I loved are turned against me. Think you got problems? How about that? My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh. Now, I don't know if that's literal. I'll tell you one thing. It's, for, it's literal with Jesus Christ. When his body was marked and scarred by the cat of nine tails and the thorn, the Bible says his back was like a flower that goes through the field. I bet you could, not a bone of him was broken, but I can bet you could see bones. And when I had an injury, when I worked for the submarine plant, when I had an injury with a, a grinder on my finger, you could look in there and you could see the tendons or whatever, they could, and you actually could see the bone until it perfectly healed up. So that's possible. That could be literally real. I mean, he's been real about his friends. He's been real about the people. Why would he not be real about his bones and his flesh? Does he have such a condition of the boils that it is eating his flesh away and there's a bone? I had boils. I had two boils. And I thank God they're not as bad as this one. And I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Did you know where you got that expression from? By the skin of my teeth. Came out of the King James Bible. I'm not even going to tell you what a modern Bible says because I don't care what the modern Bible says. But that expression comes from the Bible. So the next time you hear someone say, I escaped by the skin of my teeth, ask them, do you know where that saying came from? I don't know. How do you feel about the Bible? I hate the Bible. It's written by men. Well, you just quoted the Bible. Huh? Remember, Job's the first book. And now, really, look at that for a minute. Skin of your teeth. There is no skin on your teeth. Huh? Your gums, but have now now look at look at the plea. This is what Job wants. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me. O ye my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. That's the devil. Will you pity me? Instead of antagonizing me, instead of vexing me, instead of hammering at me. And that's Jesus. When they should have said, you know what, Jesus, you look like a mess. We ought to stop. They went even more. The Bible uh, is, it's Luke or John says, and they did things that were even blasphemous to Jesus. There are things recorded that happened to Jesus. The Bible, don't you dare even write that. Have pity on me. Have pity on me, oh my friend. Call them friends, but... For the hand of God has touched me. 
Why do ye persecute me as God? You're persecuting me. You're not helping me. You're vexing me. You're destroying me. You're damning me. You're condemning me. Pity me. And are not satisfied with my flesh. I don't know. Take a look at me. Look at me. Can't you see? Oh, watch this. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Book. Job got his request. And he got two requests according to Job. Oh, God, do you have eyes like I do? Nope, but I will. Oh, if my words were written in a book. Okay, Job, I got it. We will. The first book recorded. Written. How's that? There it is. We are reading Job's request, and we are saved by Job's request. And Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Job is never going to pass away. That they were graven with an iron pen and led in a rock forever. Well, we got pages of wood. For I know, now this is very important. For a man that has no Bible. For I know. These things have I written that you may know you have eternal life. A Catholic can't answer this yes. A Jehovah Witness is blown out of the water with this. A Mormon, oh we're going to get UFOs and whatever on, on whatever planets. Maybe Uranus. No religion can state what Job said. Because they don't have assurance as I have assurance through the word of God that was just mentioned. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Who is the Redeemer? Jesus Christ and he has not suffered and died and Job doesn't know his name. Job doesn't know anything about Calvary. He thinks everybody's going to be judged at one final judgment. And that he, the Redeemer, is God, shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Second Advent, right there, there it is. Or even the first, well he says the latter day, so that would be the second Advent. When, after the second Advent, in a thousand year millennium, then all the books are open judgment. And though my skin Though after my skin, worms destroy this body, decay, corrupt. I'm going to go into the grave and my body is going to decay and the worms are going to eat it and it's going to, my flesh is going to go bye-bye, dust. Yet, in my flesh, wait a minute, the worms is ate it. In my flesh shall I see God, the Redeemer. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. Job chapter 19, verse 25 and 26. Job believes in the resurrection. He believes in the resurrection of Revelation 20. He has no idea about the church resurrection or rapture. He said, though heaven and earth go away, I am going to stand before God and I will be in a body. And we know in Revelation 20, he we know Job's name is going to be in that book, so Job will not go off in a lake of fire that burn forever. And he'll stand before God. So he tells us, when the people are at the great white throne judgment, though they've decayed, they're in their body. Right there. Whom I shall see God for myself, not no one else, me. I'm going to see God. And my eyes shall be whole. The rich man in hell's eyes beheld Abraham and Lazarus. You die and you still have your eyeballs. You still have your tongue. You still have your hands. My eyes shall behold and not another. There's no one else. You know what Paul says? There's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. Job says, no other but God and Jesus. The Redeemer being Jesus. We know that. 
We know by the hip, my Redeemer liveth. We're singing about Jesus. Notice that not another. That matches Paul right in the Corinthians. Another Jesus, another. Though my reins, the flesh, the, the, all the ligaments and muscles, though my reins be consumed within me. When this body, and Job's body has decay. I had probably just hair and bones left. And I don't know how brittle the bones are. I don't know anything about the decaying process. But Job said, I'm going to stand up, and there's my body, and there's God, and he's going to open up the books, and he's going to judge me. Resurrection. Death and hell gave up the, the, the bodies that were in them, and not everyone, great and small, stood before God in their bodies. Later on, we believe that some of us believe that the transformation of being becoming a worm, but that's not what we're looking at right now. So Job knows he's going to decay, and he knows he's going to stand before God in a good body. But ye, his friends should say, why persecute we him? Seeing the root of the matter is found in me. He's got the faith. He knows what's going on. Be ye afraid of the sword. For wrath bringeth the punishment of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Where is there a judgment? With a sword. The second advent of Jesus Christ. And Job is speaking, and he doesn't even know what he's saying. And with scripture, with scripture that Job doesn't have, when you read and study the Bible, you say, ah, there it is. I understand now. So there's Job. Everybody's gone from Job. Today, when I did, I did today, uh, biblical truth in him, there's no friend like Jesus. Though others may go away, God will never leave thee. Jesus will never leave thee. He'll never forsake thee. And if you go away and backslide, he'll still be there waiting for you. That father was still waiting for the prodigal son.